In this problem, we'll talk about a mortgage. And a mortgage sort of follows quite logically behind some of the other problems where we calculate the value of an annuity. In the case of the mortgage, the value of the annuity are the amount of the monthly payments that we have to calculate. So um, I'd encourage you to pause the video, take a moment, read the problem very carefully. This problem has a lot of information in it. And when you feel you're ready to see the solution, restart the video. Okay, so in this problem, we learn that um, this particular individual is interested in purchasing a house. The purchase price of the house is $200,000. He already has $50,000. That means that he has saved up or somehow he already has $50,000 he can use towards the purchase price. And he'll need to borrow $150,000 to buy the house. And the amount of money that he uses, that he borrows to buy the house, we call that a mortgage when it comes to a house. So let me just summarize some of those uh, items. So the purchase price of the house is 200000 The problem actually calls this $50,000 a down payment. And a down payment is a word that's commonly used for large purchases. And that means this is the amount of cash that he has. And he can actually reduce the amount of money he borrows because he already has this amount for a down payment. So what he actually needs to borrow is $150,000. And this will be the amount that we call the mortgage. This $150,000 comes from, most often, a bank. And we're told in the problem that the bank is willing to offer an interest rate, I, of 10% compounded monthly. We are also told that the term of the mortgage is five years. And we're also told the amortization period, let's call it amortization, is 10 years. Now, these two terms, the term term, and the term amortization means something very specific when it comes to mortgages. The term refers to the time period over which the particular interest rate is valid. So you could think of the term as sort of, this is the deal for now. But as you may know, interest rates change over time. And most of the time, neither lenders nor borrowers want to lock into something for too, too long because this interest rate might change. So the term is sort of the agreement that the borrower makes with the bank for the amount of time that this interest rate will hold. Not to be confused with the amortization period. The amortization period is the total amount of time that the borrower plans to take to actually pay the loan off or pay the $150,000 back to the bank. I think it might be useful for us to think about this mortgage also in terms of a cash flow diagram. And if we do that, draw a cash flow diagram, and this is time t equal to zero, I'll just draw zero for the moment. If we borrow $150,000, think of that as money that I'm receiving. So on my cash flow diagram, I'm going to have an up arrow. I'll just write 150k. So $150,000 is what I receive at time t equal to zero. And then over the span of 10 years, I'm going to make monthly payments on my mortgage. And they'll continue on for the full 10 years. I won't draw all of the arrows, but you can imagine that they're all in there. 
Um, and this is where the mortgage payments, really, we see them as exactly the same thing as an annuity. They're a series of constant payments, all the same amount, and thinking about the equivalence uh, concept that we learn in engineering economics, what I'm looking for is what is the value of these payments, this A, that over the span of 10 years exactly equals $150,000 using an interest rate of 10% compounded monthly. So if you think back to the video where we discussed uh, nominal and effective interest rates, you'll realize that my 10% compounded monthly has to be modified a little bit. The 10% remembers what we call a nominal interest rate. So in order to calculate the monthly interest rate, I'm going to take the 10% divide by 12 because that's the number of compounding periods that I have. So for my engineering economics problem, I, I'll summarize some of the variables that I have. I know the P, the P is the 150,000. A, the value of the annuity is what I'm looking for. The number of periods, the number of periods are going to be equal to the number of monthly payments. So I can't think of it in terms of years. I know that I'll be making payments every month. So I have to think about how many months there will be. So my number of periods is going to be 10 years times 12 months or 120 months. Similarly, my interest rate, I need to consider the interest rate for the month. And knowing that I have 10% as of the nominal rate and 12 compounding periods, I can conclude that my monthly interest rate for the purpose of the time value of money calculations will be 0 0.00833, repeating, or 0.833%. So once I've reached this point, I have the I, the N, and it's always good to double check that I'm using an N, number of periods, that corresponds to the interest rate. The interest rate is monthly interest rate. The number of periods is in months. So I should be well prepared to solve the problem from the typical time value of money uh, calculations. So similar to the problem um, we looked at for uh, return on an investment in a machine, here, we're using the same formula where what it is that we're looking for is the value of the annuity. What I know is the present value. What I multiply by will be the A given P type factor for a certain interest rate and a certain number of periods. And if I plug the relevant numbers in for this particular problem, I have the A given P at, we'll call it 0.8. 33% in 120 periods. And now it would be useful for me to go to a table to calculate the value or to find the value of this factor. Unfortunately, I can't do that because as you notice here, I do not have a nice round number. I have no choice but to actually use the formula for A given P. So I'll continue the problem and I'll substitute the formula for A given P, which is I times one plus I to the N divided by one plus I to the N minus one. And if we substitute into this expression, we substitute our I is equal to 0.833 percent and our n equal to 120, we should end up with a factor of 0 0.0132151. And if I go ahead and multiply that out, I end up with 1,982 
26 as the value of the annuity. What that means is 120 payments of 1982-26 using an interest rate of 10% compounded monthly will be equivalent to $150,000 that's borrowed. So the answer to our problem is that the monthly payments on this mortgage are $1,982.26.